Hi, this is New Time on Silk Way TV channel. We introduce you with the most visible news and important events that happen throughout this week in Kazakhstan and Central Asia. More details on politics, economy, social and cultural life with opinions from the most recognizable experts of Kazakhstan and world. I'm Anur Mangalin. This is what you'll see today. Religion should not be an instrument of geopolitical confrontation. What is the role of clergy in the divisive world we live in? Exclusive interview of the New Time. Kazakhstan is a final destination for the foreign investors. How country enables its investing potential today? Baljan Semigulin has studied real investing cases. Digital Bridges Astana hosted top tech companies with its CEOs these days. What messages did they share with the new generation of digital nomads? President Kasim Jamar Tokayev took part in the C summit in Bishkek. This year, the summit is chaired by Kyrgyzstan. Leaders of Azerbaijan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Russia and Belarus also participated in the meeting. Politicians discussed issues of economic integration and ecology. Traditionally, much attention is paid to the development of trade, investment partnerships and security in the C's countries. It was also announced that the next summit will be held on October 8, 2020 in Moscow. The key task is the development of close trade and economic ties. The markets of the Commonwealth countries are traditionally priority for us. At the end of last year, the CIC countries accounted for more than a quarter of Kazakhstan's foreign trade turnover. We need to take advantage of our unique geographical position and connect global markets, turning our region into a major transport and logistic hub. Today about 80% of land transit traffic between Europe and Asia goes through Kazakhstan. We pay great attention to the further development of the Trans-Caspian Transport Route, the North-South Corridor, as well as the full use of the capabilities of Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan and Iran Railway. Today's summit is another opportunity for Kazakhstan to demonstrate its multilateralism. According to political scientist Tair Nigmanov, who we spoke to earlier, C summit can be seen as a political tradition and a ritual leaders of the countries are trying to keep up with. The absence of Prime Minister of Armenia Nikol Pashinyan is a significant difference of the summit as well, noted Mr. Nigmanov, adding that recent escalation of the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh is believed to be blame. Some uh, country members of CIS are also country members of uh, Eurasian Economic Union. And uh, for us, for example, for Kazakhstan, for Kyrgyzstan, Belarus and Russia, Eur Eurasian Economic Union is a better place to solve real problems. So, for example, with traffic, with borders, with uh, bilateral and multilateral uh, trade. And uh, CIS is for us is no so important. And uh, because some countries like Moldova or Azerbaijan uh, is not so integrated in our economic space. For me, uh, this is li uh, more like a ritual. Without real policy, it is like a uh, meeting of old friends. It is like a historical, uh, historical political tradition. For Kazakhstan, it is ritual for uh, our multilateral, multivectoral uh, foreign policy, because uh, in September our president visited uh, the United States, uh, he also uh, visited Germany. Uh, this October, this month is for uh, our um, neighbors. <laughs> To know in details what are the main issues on the agenda between Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, countries with the Soviet past, which are now key players in Central Asia, we invited political analyst Gaziz Abishev. He joins me in our studio right now. Gaziz, good evening. I know that you are ready to tell us more about Kazakh-Kyrgyz relations, but not only. You also prepared your review on the most important topics related to Central Asia, so please go ahead. Thank you, Ainur. I am ready to share my top three topics for today's review just in a moment. <music> President Tokayev is on a visit to Kyrgyzstan. The common agenda includes a number of issues of mutual economic cooperation. Trade turnover in 2022 was $1.1 billion. The overambitious goal is to bring it to $2 billion by the end of 2024. 
No doubt, the topic of water security plays an important role. Last summer's drought, which affected both countries, demonstrated an importance of cooperation in this sphere. Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan need to build an effective system for sharing water resources, building and advanced political mechanisms that would prevent political conflicts. Logistics also plays an important role. The region is on the path of emerging new global trade routes. It is important to figure out how to organize the most efficient logistics system. Of course, Presidents Tokayev and Japarov will discuss international issues that are on the table. This refers to cooperation with powers in the CA5 plus 1 format, the Eurasian Union, the Collective Security Treaty, the Organization of Turkic States and other formats where Astana and Bishkek coordinate their actions. On October 7th, President Tokayev visited Moscow, where together with President Putin and Mirziyoyev, he launched the transition pipeline of Russian gas to Uzbekistan through the territory of Kazakhstan. It is the so-called gas union beneficial to all three parties. In Uzbekistan, consumption exceeds production. The recent crisis has proven the need for reliable imports. Russia, being under international sanctions, is redirecting supplies from the west to the south and east. In turn, Kazakhstan can make good money on transit. In addition, there is an opportunity of receiving part of the gas for gasification of its own regions. Kazakhstan is increasing the volume of cargo turnover with Uzbekistan. In the first eight months of this year, the volumes of transported cargo were already 25% higher than the same indicators in 2022. There are several reasons for that. An economic growth in the countries of the region, including Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Improved interaction between countries, which has emerged in the last five, six years as well as the development of the idea of in-depth regional cooperation as a part of the import substitution and economical security strategy. Such dynamics can only be welcomed. Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan pair is the strategic axis of Central Asia and economic and political cooperation strengthens the overall sovereignty of the region in the international arena. If transport and logistics companies and manufacturers themselves continue to improve the efficiency of their work, we can expect even more impressive results. That's it from my part, Ainur. Giving the floor back to you. Thanks. That was political analyst Gaziz Abishev, who introduced you with his review on the most visible news and current events of Central Asia. A total of 124 Kazakh citizens returned from Israel to Kazakhstan on the repatriation flight organized by the National Air Company and Kazakh Minister of Foreign Affairs. The plane landed earlier this week at Almaty International Airport. Among passengers of the flight were families with infants, students and children. The Foreign Ministry received over 500 calls and appeals setting up an operational headquarters to facilitate the return. Notably, the repatriation also included 42 foreign nationals, around 200 Kazakhs, residing in Israel were connected through a special chat room. Overall, 77 Kazakh citizens are registered with Kazakhstan's diplomatic mission in Israel, and there may be over 400 more unregistered Kazakhs in the country. Kazakh Minister of Foreign Affairs also reports about 25 families with Kazakh citizenship who have been locked in the Gaza Strip. Discussions with the relevant parties are taking place right now to assist Kazakh citizens to flee the war zone. I called the embassy to find out if there were seats available and I was immediately included on the list of passengers for the evacuation flight. During the flight, the staff took care of us, providing meal and ensuring our well-being. A rescue team was swiftly organized on the very next day after the situation escalated. I don't know how they found my contacts, but overall, everything was quickly and efficiently coordinated. 
Kazakhstan sent 1.7 thousand tons of humanitarian aid to Afghanistan, including food, tents, clothing and bedding. The country is trying to recover from the devastating series of earthquakes documented in years. First tremor of magnitude 6.3 hit the northern part of Afghanistan on October 7th, causing the death of more than thousand people. Several more tremors of magnitude 6.3 and 5 struck the same region a couple of days later. Total number of injured increased to 9,000. In addition to humanitarian aid, a group of 45 Kazakh rescuers and medics went to the country. Many of them had previously taken part in a rescue operation in Turkey earlier this year. Here in Afghanistan, in the village of Naibrofi, our rescuers cleared the rubble of more than 200 fragments of houses. 80 local residents were provided with medical assistance. Journalists of Kazan Forum International News Agency shared video fragments from Kabul. When the first earthquake hit the city of Herat, it was terrible, unbelievable. I don't seem to recall earthquakes so powerful here in Afghanistan. Thousands of people died. It was a nightmare. People lost their home. They sleep under the sky. It's a tragedy. Religious leaders can and should contribute to the world peace. The Monsignor Halet Akashe of Vatican has come to Kazakhstan for the 20th time to participate in the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions. In the interview to the New Time, the Monsignor Akashe shared the view of the Catholic Church on the role of clergy in modern geopolitics. How can religions contribute to our society in such difficult times? Watch the fragment of an interview right now. Do you agree that in the recent years, unfortunately, the religion was, has been used as a political tool? This is a, an important question because uh, in clarifying this, we, uh, we, we precise the right role of religion in society and religion in general. In fact, the church affirms always that uh, there should uh, be no instrumentalization or use of religion for political ends. Uh, this is why uh, what happened, unfortunately, that religion has been used by some uh, to justify uh, violence or to justify also discrimination of a religious or ethnic group. So uh, the issue to resolve the question is not to put religion at the margin of society, but to allow to religion to occupy the, its right place in society. Uh, and the document signed by Pope Francis and Grand Imam of Al-Azhar in Abu Dhabi it highlighted this, that religion shouldn't be instrumentalized. And they added also something very beautiful, that God does not need to be defended. President Tokai said that now uh, we can try to solve uh, global threats by uniting religious leaders. Uh, only 17 representatives uh, took place in the first uh, Congress of uh, leaders of uh, world and traditional religions. Now it's more than 100 of them. Uh, how do you evaluate these dynamics and uh, how do you see the future of, the, of this Congress, please? I'm pleased to say that I have been privileged to be a part of the Congress since its, its beginning. And uh, what I said yesterday that I uh, observed the growth of the Congress, but also I uh, grew throughout the Congress, meaning that I contrib contributed as everyone uh, participating, in my case, in the name of my diacastery in the, in the Vatican, diacastery for interreligious dialogue. Then I contributed to the growth of the Congress, but I also learned from other uh, friends, religious leaders at, at the Congress, and to, together, we, uh, we contributed to, uh, to bringing the Congress to what it is now. And certainly, 
it has been a, a very wise and very courageous uh, decision to uh, establish the Congress. And as you referred to President Tokayev, he has been very active uh, in, uh, in the Congress when he was the chairman of the Senate. So the question uh, is that uh, religious leaders can and should contribute to peace. How? For example, in situations of conflict and tension, affirming that a human life is sacred. Voila. Then you shouldn't kill. Uh, obviously, there is a question, a big question of self-defense at personal and national level, but the principle should be reminded. <music>
for this year, we're on track to produce 90 locomotives, uh, which essentially is double of what we produced last year. In terms of the workforce increase, uh, at an average, uh, last year we had around 520 employees overall at LKZ. At this point in time, as of today, we have more than 850 employees working at LKZ. Mm -hmm. So you, you can see that the labor workforce have increased more than 70% year over year. Kazakhstan is set for a transformative partnership with Vaptec following a strategic cooperation agreement with Kazakhstan Timur-Jolot National Railway Company. During the meeting with Kasim Jomar Tokayev in New York, Rafael Santana, president of Vaptec, unveiled plans to invest almost 1 billion US dollars in Kazakhstan's transport and logistics sector. This includes creating ventures into hydrogen technology, expanding local production, adopting green technologies and enhancing maintenance services to increase export to neighboring Central Asian countries. One of the projects uh, within those investments would be that Webtech is planning to open an engineering center in Kazakhstan to develop the, to become uh, one of the center of excellences for uh, the locomotive design and maintenance. We've been working in Kazakhstan for quite some time now and obviously the company uh, does believe that uh, Kazakhstan, uh, the investment climate is, is really good and we do believe that uh, there is a potential opportunity for future growth, not only in Kazakhstan, but also the entire region. Webtech chose Kazakhstan as a hub for its future business operations. Kazakhstan's future as a destination for foreign investments looks promising due to its strategic location, resource wealth and growing focus on technologies and sustainability. As it continues to develop and engage with the global economic partners, Kazakhstan offers a wide range of opportunities for foreign investors in various sectors and thus opens a way for better interaction into world economic ties. Bajan Samigulna, Koshkarbay Kaliyev, Silkway TV channel, Astana. Ardak Zibeshev, the chairman of the Investment Committee under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan, joins us in our studio. We will discuss the investment potential of our country a little bit in details right now. Mr. Ardak Zibeshev, thank you very much uh, for coming to our studio. Uh, let us start our conversation from mentioning the rising activity among other among our uh, foreign partners in investing to Kazakh economy. Um, just recently, there was an official visit of President of Kazakhstan to Germany, and we can see a real activity among German investors uh, in the energy sector, particularly in the area of green hydrogen. We know that Svevint's company um, is investing around $50 billion into hydrogen production in the Mangustau region. So the energy security um, as a whole is very uh, important topic in Central Asia, but what uh, Germany, German interest has in it? Yeah, good evening, Ainur. Uh, thank you for your invitation and for your question. So first of all, I would like to give an overview of our relationship between Germany and Kazakhstan. And for now, I can say that Germany has been traditionally our strategic partner in mm -hmm. European Union. And the volume of our direct investment from Germany to Kazakhstan for last 15 years amounts about 5.8 billion US dollars. And there are a number of intergovernmental agreements that helps us to deepen the trade, economic cooperation, and as well as mutual protection and promotion of uh, our investments. So Kazakhstan attach very high importance to cooperation with German companies. Currently, there are more than 600 uh, enterprises with the participation of German capital that successfully operates in our country. And there are such well-known names as Siemens, Helderberg Cement, Knauf, Vilo, mm -hmm. Klaas, and others. So among those companies, there is a new one, Hyresia One project in yes. Kazakhstan. That was uh, in your question. So this uh, company, as a Kazakhstan, has all preconditions to become a leader in a green hydrogen production we signed with them a 50 billion dollar uh, deal contract and the german swedish company swevint uh, will be implementing it so this is the largest project uh, of its kind in the world and this uh, project will produce green hydrogen which will open the door 
for pro producing green steel, aluminium and other metals. Mm -hmm. And the investor has undertaken specific uh, uh, obligations within the framework of the signed agreement. And in addition to investments in Kazakhstan, uh, he will be transferring its technologies. Right. Yes. So when we are talking, uh, in general, when we are talking about attracting <coughs> foreign investments, it's very important to build a very uh, comfortable conditions for, for investors. So what, um, what, is, what is being done already by uh, your committee as well to make these conditions really comfortable? Uh, y yes, uh, so for now we have uh, a very clear and uh, let's say stable framework for investors, legislative framework, which provides them with the certain incentives such as tax incentives, customs incentives, uh, land plots, mm -hmm. uh, which is given as a in-kind grant for investors. And also there is a new instrument that was presented in 2021 uh, by our president, the investment agreement that gives a very customized uh, uh, measures of government support. It's uh, tailored for each investor for uh, big uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And there is a main uh, part of this uh, instrument is the legislation stability up to 25 years. And we provide the full uh, support to German business uh, for successful operation in Kazakhstan. So there are several effective uh, uh, platforms to do that. Uh, the first, I can say, it's an intergovernmental working group on trade and economic uh, cooperation, the Kazakh-German Business Council, Berlin Eurasian Club, mm -hmm. which is taken every year, the government working group on uh, working with the German uh, investors within the Eastern Committee, and also there is a special working group created uh, under the leadership of our first deputy prime minister, uh, Mr. Sklar, who on a monthly basis uh, provides a very quick and uh, uh, high quality solutions to all problematic issues mm -hmm. uh, which arises uh, during the operational period of uh, So we can say ministry. that changes have been on the way in uh, in in um, in creating this investment climate for foreign partners yes so we are constantly working on creating favorable investment climate for our german investors but not only german i believe yes, not only german but uh, uh, as today's topic is a german uh, and kazakh partnership mm -hmm. so that's why uh, i'm just focusing on german uh, investors but yes we even don't divide our investors not only between countries and also we do not divide them if it's local investor or foreign investor. Mm -hmm. By legislation, they are all investors. Mm -hmm. But I think the main, uh, the main topic, the main idea is to, uh, to say that Kazakhstan is a stable uh, destination for any, any of the investments coming from different kind of parties and countries. Yes, so Kazakhstan uh, stable, very transparent, with the clear uh, and uh, framed legislation, mm -hmm. and that always do uh, uh, this legislation even better for mm -hmm. investors. Thank you very much, Ardak Zibesha, for you. your time and for your answers. Thank you, Einar. Thanks. Kazakhstan has achieved an outstanding progress in digital transformation, said the Chief of Digital Government of the United Nations, Vincenzo Aquaro, on the sidelines of the International Tech Forum Digital Bridge in Astana. Now, Kazakhstan is on the 28th place in the ranking according to the e-government development index. It is the highest position among all six countries so far. Kazakhstan is uh, one of uh, really best cases on uh, digital transformation because uh, if you look at uh, the all the ranking uh, uh, the, the the country 
did an impressive improvement starting from a very low position in 2010 and now is already reaching the, the group of the leading countries with a very high GDI. And uh, I do believe that uh, for 2024, the, the, when we are going to do the new report, uh, I, I, I do believe that uh, uh, even more progress will, uh, will uh, uh, appear on, uh, on the ranking. The head of state, Kasim Jomar Tokayev, opened a plenary session of the Digital Bridge Forum, mandating to complete the 5G connection in Kazakhstan ahead of schedule by the end of 2025. He noted that the residents of the most remote areas should also get an access to the broadband internet. To do this, it is necessary to use the capabilities of low-orbit satellite systems. Notably, Digital Bridge Forum this year gathered more than 20,000 participants with delegations from 30 countries. In five years, it has become the largest platform in Central Asia where tech experts discuss the latest trends and prospects of the local IT industry development. And that's it for today. This is how we saw this week in Kazakhstan. More news and special projects about our country you can watch on Silkway TV channel. Stay tuned and see you later.